Maybe for the audience that doesn't know anything about the Kaddish, maybe you say a few words about it and translate a few words from the Kaddish. Well, Iskadav, Iskadash is a Kaddish. It's said by Jewish people who uh, want to mourn their relatives, mainly fathers, mothers, and brothers, could be sisters. And it's the ultimate praise of, of God. It has nothing to do with death. The real question that arises in, in the Kaddish prayer is, if God is omnipotent and unctuous and he controls or he or she controls, I don't want to get into the philosophy of, of God, uh, then why do people pray? This is a question you should answer probably. Why people pray? Yeah, if, if God, it's all in a sense predestined, that, that God cannot be questioned. Yiskadal Yiskadash, we accept God for what he or she is and cannot question him. So why do, why prayer? There are a few answers to this. One would say to change the, 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 the decree. The others would say to change themselves. So the decree would be on the previous person. So the changing of one's heart is the purpose of uh, prayer. It's the eternal question. Yeah. And I'm sure during the Shoah, yeah. people asked this question during the Holocaust. Yeah. I'm sure this was a perennial question. Uh, I think I asked it of Eli Wiesel when he was on the show, mm -hmm. and it's a fundamental question, but the, the Jewish community does pray. I think one of the interesting aspects of Kaddish is that you need a minion, ten people, to pray. Why can't one pray alone for his, his father's soul or his mother's soul? And the concept in, in my opinion was the concept of keeping a Jewish community together and in the Jewish community had a rabbinical authority and therefore you had rabbinical uh, tradition that was transferred from generation to generation. This is uh, my own opinion. Uh, in the Kaddish, the last lines refer to the fact that the Lord, the name of the Lord is beyond all blessings, hymns, or consolations, so there is no hope for consolation and meaning in the world. So one should accept one's lot. Right. That's it, period. So, so it's again, sort of an irony. Right. You may want to pray, but you won't find any answer. So it's the ultimate acceptance so then, of one. So as a psychologist, right. psychiatrist, maybe you can answer that. You, you pray for your own uh, sense of serenity or solace or uh, uh, some way to exert some uh, psychological energy. I, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. But there is a clear, a clear statement there that this name is relegated to the transcendence and you cannot expect any answer. It's the answer of God to Job. that You cannot expect any answer to the meaning of suffering in this world. And for our generation, a post-Holocaust generation, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great prayer very important one. Um, but Leon, have you gotten any answer? Who wrote the Kaddish? And uh, how <laughs> <laughs> Kaddish, <laughs> you no, a, a, a very long voyage. I, I, I was there is, no, to, uh, there is no singular person that I know that wrote the Kaddish. The Kaddish came about basically around 1096 when the Crusaders were massacring Jews and then you had the Black Plague and the blood libels. And there was some kind of prayer that the rabbis, the elitist rabbis, were saying, but the, the ritual did not come down to the to the individual ordinary person. ordinary person. And in the Christian religion, there were there was the ability for those people who had suffered death to uh, memorialize their dead people. And I think what happened is there was a merger of the Talmudic passage with the Christian ritual. And this became sort of a universal prayer for the common man in Judaism. So it, it took away the elitist, where the rabbis only would say some kind of prayer or Kaddish and allowed the whole, and every person as a person needs to ventilate his or her grief. And so it became a universal prayer. So what you are saying, and this is very crucial, that till that time, 1096, around that time, only, only scholars, were mourned uh, or memorialized uh, by reciting the Kaddish. And ever since then, ordinary people were included and uh, Christian rituals, including ordinary people, were endorsed. 
and the uh, Jewish called, texts, uh, right. Talmudic texts were adapted to, to this effect. Right. And this way, rabbis could uh, democratize religion. Yes, and it was called Chukat HaGoyim, that the rabbis in that period of time, we talk about in the book, looked, Chukat means the law of the non-Jew, looked at the law of the non-Jew, which in, in general, gen general Jewish principles, not, it's frowned upon. Right. But they needed to do it because they needed to satisfy the emotions of the community. Now, whether they said it only for rabbis or the rabbis said it only for disasters is something I think happened both ways. We're not clear. Maybe we should find some evidence in it. But there are other interesting things in the book where we show that the basically Ashkenazi, which was the German Jews, took this uh, program of Kaddish, and we'll talk about it after the break, incorporated into the Sephardic community, and the Sephardic community wrote it in a book called the Shulchan Aruch, which was a set table, and then it became part of the Ashkenazi. We'll go through that whole uh, rigmarole, so to speak, and it's fascinating. I don't think uh, most people have thought about it in those terms. So we'll be right back, and Professor Lar will continue to probe me about why I wrote this book on Kaddish. Yiskadah, Yiskadah, Shemay Rabo, Hoi, 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 You maybe remember that Kaddish that I believe you could attribute to Sovanila, and that's the last Jewish prayer on uh, Yom Kippur. My uh, producer, Ani Mazur, is always in his synagogue on Neva, and he could probably hum that song. I'm not sure he could sing it, but we'll test him later, too. We're back with Professor Nati Laor. We are talking about Kaddish, uh, the mystery of the Kaddish, the orphan's Kaddish, a book written by yours truly, and uh, Saul Meislish. It will be translated, by the way, in Hebrew, with uh, the very famous and noteworthy paper there, and the largest one, the Yediot Achronot. It's a, a fascinating uh, journey that took me over three years to, uh, I guess you never complete study, so just at least to get this book out. But uh, Professor Lohr was very, extremely helpful to me, so uh, he should really be asking me the questions today and see if I've been a good student.